Good evening, everyone. This is Gaganjit Singh from 30NX Learning. And 30, 30NX Learning is a subsidiary of Bobao Electronic Networks. I welcome you all to today's webinar on the opportunities and growth with the business development role in the SaaS industry. Today, we have Mr. Paresh Masade, CEO of Bao. And also, along with him, we have Mr. Jasaswi Pisapati. He's the director of sales, Bao Illumina Networks. I welcome Mr. Paresh Masade and Mr. Yasasri Pisapati for, for amazing. We are looking forward to an amazing webinar ahead uh, because we are going to you know, listen to you where, about the SaaS industry, how we can make our career with the business development role. Thank you so much uh, for joining us. And uh, we, have see, we have seen an amazing response across India. We, we, we got a lot of registrations and there are people joining from uh, 100 institutions uh, like across India. I think more than 100 institutions, the way we have received this response, we already have somewhere around 400 people joining us live right now. And uh, without further ado, because we don't want to take much of time, I'll, I'll just hand over this uh, webinar to Mr. Paresh Masade, who will be taking care of the session. Uh, Paresh, sir, uh, the session is all yours. So, yeah, thank you, Gagan. Thank you very much for inviting me for the session. And it's a pleasure speaking to all the 400 plus participants right now. Uh, so, uh, I will, what I'll do is I'll take you through the quick uh, roundabout about a small presentation and then would invite Ashishvi uh, to join the call and answer the questions that you might have. Uh, let me begin with the presentation and yeah. Right. So, uh, because most of your students, uh, I may not, I, I, what I'm expecting is that I'm not sure if all of you would know about uh, what is this about, what is the program roles and things. Let me uh, drive you through it. So let's, let's keep this uh, session more of an interactive session. I think Gagan, can you open the chat as well? Uh, sure, sir. I'm, I'm opening the chat, right? Yes. So, uh, let me begin with, okay. Now, Quick question, uh, maybe you can just use the chat box to answer. What is common in these companies? Have you seen any of these companies? Uh, you must have heard about them, many of them, right? So what is common in these companies? I'm looking at the chat box, please share that. All of them are SaaS companies, yes, absolutely. Right, so all of, this, all of these companies are SaaS companies. Now, what is SaaS? Some of you may not know what is SaaS, right? SaaS is basically a software as a service. What does SaaS mean, right? So what is a software as a service or a SaaS, right? So earlier we used to have something like a desktop software. If you choose like say Microsoft Word, right? You have Microsoft Word, Microsoft uh, uh, Spreadsheets. All of these are desktop software. You have to install something on your desktop. Whereas if you look at Google, uh, Google uh, Docs or Google Drive, right? So that is actually on the cloud. You have everything on the cloud, but you use the same thing. So you can actually create documents, you can use spreadsheets, almost everything. So this is called SaaS software. It is like posted on the cloud, put somewhere else, but you use it whenever you want it. You don't have any software to install on your desktop or machine, right? So that is something called software as a service. And all the companies, right, from SaaS, uh, Salesforce to Atlas Sign to service so almost everyone all the companies that you see and there are many companies that are into SaaS space they have built up some softwares that companies use now and the question what is common in these companies anyone can answer chat use the chat box again to answer i see hardly see any guesses here right uh, so let me help you here all of these are SaaS companies based out of India. All of these are Indian SaaS companies. Okay, they started in India and they're selling globally, but all of these are Indian SaaS companies. And many of them are billion dollar plus companies. Zoho, Freshwork, Kisflow, almost all of them are billion dollar plus large companies, right? So these are huge SaaS software companies coming out of India. Now, why am I speaking about this? I'm speaking because SaaS in India, SaaS companies in India is growing very fast. There were only about like three, say 3,000 companies in 2014. Now there are about 10,000 companies. And the growth rate of SaaS companies globally has been like about 17%. But in India, that's growing almost at 30% year on year, right? 
and there's like lot of new saas companies large saas companies coming out of india right and it's like expected that uh, this is a from a, a report from bain and company that says indian saas revenue is going to be 20 billion dollars in by 2025 the next 5 years it's going to like boom like anything and this is an opportunity that i think uh, we are here to discuss about right now what is difference between this why is this an opportunity like if you see uh, earlier companies that what are one of the revolutions that changed in india is the it industry right most of the companies like you see tcs infosys uh, or any of this wipros right all of these companies had outsourced the software they have, they outsourced the software development from overseas to india right and all of this were built on software services now uh, the time the next 5 years is going to be a space where indian product companies indian saas based product companies are going to rule the world and these are the companies that you are seeing have rolled actually built up such large businesses within a few years right when when was fresh work started probably about 5 6 years ago right all of these are very large companies that are just coming out of india and next 5 years this is an opportunity very big opportunity big boom that's coming in india now how does it matter how does it help you so the first question mera kya hai mere ko kya milega isme mere liye kya hai what is that for students in here right so what is important here for students is that all of these saas companies find uh, really find uh, face very difficult have struggle actually a lot to find really good people the for mainly for the bdr roles bdr is a business development representative roles for there something called the inside sales team i will go into depth of what is inside sales how it helps etc and all but they find they said almost you i spoke to almost any of the companies all of them say hey i can't find bdr people here in india now why is it important all of the saas companies sell from us uh, build in product build a product in india and sell it to us without having a single person maybe that's where i'll actually start saying uh, give a background about uh, thing now here's uh, you see the companies bosch tata steel hero tata power rpg group kpit rakuten i don't think so you will be able to guess about it is but these are all the companies to which we have sold we as a company wow which is uh, the company for which i am the ceo and founder uh, we have sold about a crore of business we have done about a crore of business with these companies all without a single visit without ever going to any of these companies we just sold it sitting in office in hyderabad right now that is something called inside sales so all the companies that why why am i saying that uh, a business of uh, of us i'll come back to that slide not only not only the software companies uh, we work with about 400 plus educational institutions across the country almost all the top institutions including iisc bangalore two iits five nits uh, five uh, iits five iims 11 nits of the top all almost all the top colleges use our platform what wow is uh, for their alumni engagement and all of this has been sold sitting here in hyderabad sitting at office now this is what my colleague uh, hsu has been leading and uh, director of he's a director of sales at wow i will probably introduce him and bring him on the call as well uh, but what i wanted to convey here is that hey all these companies uh, the why is it in india a very big boom for saas is that earlier in 2000 when the thing started Uh, us companies uh, used to do the sales there in us you are already almost all the companies had the sales offices in us and all the development and back office was actually outsourced to india because development you can't outsource you can't outsource sales sales has to be in physical in location to sell in us right but now that's changed okay this next 5 years boom is going to be where you will be sitting in india you will be building the software in india but you are selling to the globe and that's where the next big revolution in hiring for saas uh, specifically for the sales roles bdr is a, bdr is nothing but a sales roles as going to happen and you do that setting in office here in india now that's going to be changing the entire industry that's already this this is not not changing now it's actually already happening okay maybe most of you are not aware of that but all of the companies would be looking forward to hire people from india for their bdr roles right now jab bhi sales whenever we speak about sales everyone says that hey sales is something very bad how do i really go I, everyone wants to go and go and get into an it job okay it role it job because you sit in office and do the sales right uh, you uh, sit in office and do some coding and uh, have a nice uh, role but 
and have a lot of myths. So let me, I think we will, I'll just roll out a quick quiz. Let, let's understand the myths of sales. Uh, why, do, why do people actually not like sales roles or what are the things that you uh, think are not, uh, are the myths of sales careers? I'm just launching a poll, probably uh, answer that. Uh, meanwhile, there's like, I think we have hit more than 500 participants. If any of your friends are missing, uh, they can see it live on YouTube as well. Uh, so this session is live on YouTube. You can just go there and uh, see on YouTube. Oh, interesting. Right. I think many of you have answered. I will just wait for a couple of minutes before we close the poll. Please use your poll to close like now. Yeah. Cool. I think all, all the myths are true. I think we got more, more of most of you have a lot of uh, questions answered already there. A uh, few who haven't, please answer that. I will just go on with the presentation. Right. I got the answers. I'll just close the presentation after a minute, but to, for you, all of you to see the answers. But I think we got the myths. Okay. First thing, Jeb, whenever we speak about sales, right, we think that sales people have to travel a lot. Whenever that's the, the picture that comes to our mind. Uh, yes, Sahil, I think I will answer that. Let's uh, let the present uh, the session go on. There are people who are voting more than about a hundred who have to get vote. Let's I'll share that. Or should I end the say? No, let me let me continue that. Let's I'll just continue with the presentation and then come back. All right. So, uh, Gagan, is it audible? I think. Yes, yes, it is audible. All right. I think there's someone who came in. Okay. All right. So first myth that you have is the sales people have to travel a lot. Uh, the picture that comes to my mind whenever we hear about sales is like someone picking up a suitcase and then going to door to door and tipping selling. Now that's that's true. It was the case for most of the times. But uh, what you're speaking here is not all sales roles are that. So what we are speaking about is inside sales. This is called inside sales. It's a special role in most of the SaaS companies where companies rely on inside sales because it helps them reduce their cost by almost 40 to 90 percent. Okay, because you don't have to travel. You have to just sit in the office and do the sales and sell to large companies. You don't have actually you sell a lot of money actually not traveling. And because of pandemic, because of COVID, this has gone to a next level. Most of the companies who were actually having all fit sales also converting to inside sales. Now, uh, I think there's an article there in the uh, presentation. I'll just share those uh, links and all. I think Gagan will share that uh, with all of you. Uh, please join that uh, uh, group and he will actually share this article. So all the articles that I'm quoting anywhere in the presentation, he will share that with you guys. Now, this is an article by uh, Mr. Gregor from HubSpot, uh, who speaks, HubSpot is a very big organization again uh, into sales. Uh, he speaks about why five, uh, five reasons why inside sales is a very good career move. And I think all of you have to read that article, right? So this first myth at in sales people is has to travel a lot is absolutely not true. Uh, this is about inside sales. You have to sit in office and do the sales. Now, second important myth, I think uh, the answer is also true. Uh, most of you have answered that as the highest rating actually is 49% of you actually answered that salespeople have to be very talkative. This is again, absolutely wrong. Okay. Uh, this is statistic that says all the best salespeople people actually know that listening is the most important sales skill. It's not about speaking. Okay. If you have to do, uh, do a deal with someone like Tata Steel, okay, or because that's what I have sold to. It's not about speaking and telling, just pitching in what you have. It's about understanding their problem, understanding what they want, and then uh, and trying to uh, comprehend that and give them a solution, right? So listening becomes the most important skill skill. And those who are the best listeners actually are the best sales guys. So if you are an introvert, if you are someone who doesn't uh, uh, speak a lot, 
that's probably a, you are actually best suited for the sales roles as well because you have to listen understand and introverts are the best guys usually so you don't have to be very talkative you actually have to listen and there's also a statistic that says uh, if you are speaking more than 20 to 30% in a sales call uh, you are speaking more than 20 to 30% then you are actually losing the call you are also all losing the lead the customer has to do the prospect has to do more talking and you have to be more listening that's the statistic that's widely uh, available the third myth like look at okay whenever i say inside sales they think it's telemarketing you pick up a phone and call like like you get the calls of your uh, uh credit card or the bank companies or the insurance companies and this is absolutely bullshit okay inside sales is definitely not really marketing and it's uh, it has the difference between that is like uh, almost 100000 dollars uh, right from your salaries uh, to the perks that you earn okay uh, so the inside sales guys do a lot of lot of work they have to do they have to do a lot of data research they have to do a lot of solutioning right again I'm giving an example of say uh, we are selling to tata steel sitting in office here right you have to understand their problem you have to see what are the requirements you have to give them a uh, right architecture you have to design a right solution for them and then do the negotiation and closure okay so all of this is a process of inside sales which is not just picking up a call and doing a cold call and saying that uh, this is not right i think hsh will also answer that in the next part uh, where we we'll going right next fourth important myth i think uh, many of you answered that but uh, there's always a common belief that are jhoot bola tabhi sales kar paunga main absolutely not again okay so the myth is that uh, most of the, the the truth is that most of the great sales people are relationship builders and uh, they actually help customers win and uh, you know this right so people buy from people they actually trust right so let's like, say if you know a friend of who, is, who has a shop or you know a company that's actually doing something you just go and buy from them because you trust the person right you don't go and uh, buy so trust so ability to build a trust in a sales meeting in a sales call is very important to have actually do a sale and that is what the bdr roles has to learn and it's not about absolutely not about uh, bluffing the customer and that's not going to work and this is the uh, inside sales roles are specifically not about that wow. another important myth i think our sales salaries are low okay and uh, like like the peanuts right again this is again a myth okay uh, these are the figures sources from glassdoor you can just go and search the base pay of uh, inside sales roles for us people are like around 6000 dollars 60000 us dollars uh, base salary for a software developer in us for a starting salary who work in infosys are around uh, 40 to 50000 dollars okay uh, so comparatively it's almost equal and with incentives it's much larger than your software roles or any other roles and if you are an account executive account executive is the next level like you have a couple of years of experience then you become an account executive uh yours is 100000 dollars 100000 dollars is probably uh you need at least 5 to 6 years of experience uh, uh in a software industry to get to that role okay so uh, what it says is that the sales salaries for inside sales and if you are a really good sales guys with some commissions that coming in bonuses are coming in uh this actually peaks much more than any of your regular salary software roles the myth number 6 is the number of sales jobs are very less right i think i'm ending the poll you can also see the results now uh share results okay right so uh number of sales jobs are very less and i i don't have to do any speaking here okay you have already seen uh, i already told that the indian saas market indian saas companies are going to be a boom in the next 5 years and each of these companies need inside sales because they're selling to the global audience they're selling to us uh, europe australia everywhere they're selling everywhere sitting in india right all of them require people in office to do the sales and this is going to be the next big role uh, most of the companies will be looking forward and this is in a high demand already in the market and the seventh myth is usually they feel that are sales mein gaya to mera kaam ho gaya it's an end of career and that's again not true okay 
uh, most of like say there's one statistic that says that 85% of the company leaders and entrepreneurs who are in america today are once the sales people like if you are a uh, if you are a sales guy you actually have an opportunity to go into almost any role you can go into the product management roles you can go into the uh, sales manager roles territory manager roles country heads or you can actually drive into becoming a ceo of a company and uh, they prefer sales people who have a sales background mainly because everyone who is in sales background under has a one very interesting feature they understand the customer really well they understand what the customer wants and that is what almost every other company every other role wants understanding of customer and that's the reason the sales guys are actually valued much more than anywhere else and like i said you start with inside sales and you have almost anything to go you can go almost anywhere from where you want and we call inside sales guys the sales guys is not just s, s the s that you see on the symbol is not for superman but the sales in the salesman are like superman why do you why is this so important let me go back now any company anything you are now probably headed towards a recession or jobs are already down cutting down everything happened right uh why is jobs going getting cut down because companies do not have projects do not have work or do not have customers coming in now who can get a customer is the sales people isn't it so whatever happens whatever whichever the jobs go down if you are a good sales guy right if you are good even not even very good you just need to be moderately good you just have to do your role companies will cut down every other department of their uh uh in their company the companies will cut down all the people from various departments in the company but they will never cut down their sales teams uh sales jobs even if you are doing moderately well they will retain you because this is the most valued because the number look at the look at the boom that you said right like software companies you have all this infosys tcs all of these guys actually are sitting here working on the back end okay where are the sales guys their sales guys are in us right you are getting the projects from the us selling from there and now actually outsourcing the development work back to uh, india okay because we were good at development we are good at uh, product development for coding and everything we are not good at we are not good at sales most of us are not good at sales uh, as a thing and now it's time for saas companies where they would actually start outsourcing all of that sales also back to india and these are the roles that are going to be thing and these are the highly demand already if you speak to any of the companies that has showed in the slide one slide two uh, you go to speak to any of the people there who are into sales role they'll say hey i feel it very difficult to find a sales person right so if you are a sales person inside sales person have a couple of years of experience you are you do the basic things right you are valued like a superman already there right so pumped up all well i think i just had a 10 minute slides are you ready to get into the sales role i would want to invite uh sshv in the call and take a lot of questions from him because he has been into the sales role sshv can you come online yeah uh hi parish thank yeah. you for having me here uh yes so i added you to spotlight so uh, guys let me introduce sshv to all of you guys so sshv is uh, director of sales at wow uh he's been working with us for more than 8 years now uh he started his career in a it role uh i uh, with cognizant worked there as a quality assurance engineer for 3 years and he joined us for uh, getting into uh, as a product project management role okay but we were a startup we were just starting up and uh, he saw the opportunity in sales he did couple of sales calls and now uh, when i ask him uh, shshv uh, would you want to go back to project management product management role he says that no absolutely not he loves sales and he doesn't want to go back from sales to anywhere he grew to a role of a sales man sales director now so shshv it's amazing to see we are uh, getting in the call uh, let's speak to the young chaps now uh, welcome to the call shshv yeah thank you thank you parish thank you gagan and thanks everyone for having me in this session right so yes. shshv a quick question um, i know yeah. you wanted to get into an mba and then you joined this so can you right. tell us a bit of uh, why do you why do you say that you love the sales role and uh, why do you don't want to go away from this okay yeah so uh, yeah so that's a great question so one one of the main reasons i would say is that uh, there is so much joy in sales like you know helping your 
customers and it, it i find it very rewarding you know helping your customers and at the same time when it when you look in terms of a company's perspective you are helping your business grow so it's very satisfying and rewarding as well and you get so much uh, kicks i would say like whenever you close that deal so i don't think like i get will get the, this kind of feeling anywhere yeah interesting interesting so you're saying that the kick that you get when you close a deal with a customer uh, is something that you don't want to leave okay uh, yes. so uh, why do companies find it difficult to hire sales people actually why do why is that so difficult to find sales people you've been hiring as well right right yes definitely yeah so one of the reasons parish like uh, i would think that uh, i think there is genuine uh, lack of supply of talent like there is genuine lack of supply of talent that is one of the reasons and adding to that like most of the companies uh, they don't have a formal sales process or they don't have an in house uh, sales team uh, they find it uh, i would say even like many ceos founders they themselves don't know how to sell like you are an exception i would say but still like they would expect uh, sales guys to build everything for them so there is a definitely a gap between what a company wants and the talent out there like the mapping so, yeah interesting okay so maybe can you help us with explain a bit more about the typical sales process and help uh, everyone understand how it works ah uh, okay yeah sure definitely yeah so uh, so before like even we try to understand how a typical sales process looks like i think fundamentally there is an assumption that one needs to understand certain things like one should know about their market they should know about the uh competitive landscape they should know about the product or at least uh, what they are going to sell uh, they should also know about their end customer it's very important to know about the end customer first like who is going to be their ideal fit customer and uh, your buyer persona what i mean by buyer persona is how your ideal customer is going to look like some of the traits of your end customer uh, now coming to a sales process now having this fundamentals or basics coming to a sales process uh, i would say the first so there are a couple of stages so let's start with the first stage it's called prospecting uh, i'll probably just explain at a very high level uh, in the interest of time so in prospecting what happens is uh, we try to figure out uh, who is going to be your potential customer and then you qualify their interest and you also try to ask certain questions like try to understand the needs of your potential customer so this typically happens in the prospecting stage okay and uh, while we do this there is also something called nurturing in the nurturing stage uh, we also try to establish a relationship with the potential customer so just because we are going to start speaking to a customer you are not going to sell on the first day right or in the first moment so you have to nurture the relationship between the clients you need to know when your client is ready or probably the prospect client is ready and you need to build a proper relationship and establish the contact with the customer right so once we do this prospecting nurturing and probably after this uh, it, it's it's something called uh, value proposition so this is where you get an opportunity where you will give your presentation or whatever like you will get an opportunity to demonstrate the value of your product or service to the client in this stage so once after this the next thing is be a closing so in closing stages what we typically call is that uh, you know you take care of your pricing negotiation you know uh, closing a deal is typically all about onboarding your customers the final steps like getting an agreement or getting the check so if i have to summarize i would say it's prospecting nurturing uh, demonstrating the value and the closing so these are the typical stages all right thanks yeah. for that thanks for helping us understand the sales process now yeah. uh, come on getting in because most of the people uh, uh, most of the people who know do not know about insights they think that it's more of a cold calling just doing a cold call randomly like because we hear this calls from all the credit card guys right so right. what are yeah. typical sales career look like for a fresher and how do they join how do they scale their career what are the roles that are available okay yeah definitely so uh, definitely like uh, th th there are so many specialized roles in sales so the first thing is fundamentally you start with a uh, mdr like i would say a data research or where you try to identify your potential customers where you do the data research so usually we call them uh, mdr market like development representatives and then uh, we have various roles like uh, bdrs aes so bdr typically stands for business development representative and a stands for account executive so bdr what they do is like they identify the potential clients like uh, 
uh, try to qualify their interest and try to set up a demo or meet with the account executive. So account executives go about uh, closing the deals. So the main purpose of account executive is demonstrating the value and closing the deal. So they are very specialized roles. So these are the common roles. Apart from this, there are plenty of roles like Maybe someone can just evolve in terms of once they start closing the deals, they can also be uh, in terms of uh, managing a sales team or a territory sales manager, or sometimes uh, they can also be a, someone who is who has a very uh, you know technical skill set. They can be a solution architect or a solutions engineer as well. These are again a very specialized skill set and they're highly valued as well because they have a technical fair and also the business acumen as well. Apart from this, there are also other roles like drip marketing or account management. Uh, this is one role. And there are other roles like someone who takes care of upselling or cross-selling. This is sometimes typically, uh, you know, once you onboard the customers, so these are different sales opportunities as well. And, and, uh, and not just this typical sales roles, uh, sales guy is well suited for even for other roles like, you know, they can get into product management as well. Uh, they can also be a customer success manager as well because they are the primary ones who interact with the customers, right? So they can be the right persons like who can fit in the other roles as well. Nice. Yeah. Right. Now, um, the most important question that I think most of the uh, uh, people who wanted to get into this would ask is, uh, what are the skills that you usually look during hiring of a for the sales force, basically the inside sales role? Okay. Uh, what kind of skills that are people usually young students would require, young sales guys would require? Okay, right. Yeah. So I think I, uh, you have covered like some of them in your myths as well. Like one of the fundamental things I would definitely uh, look for is uh, the person is genuine or not being genuine, having good listening skills. I think this is going to be a very important skill. So listening is not about hearing, but you know, having that empathy, listening to your end customer, their problems. That's very important. Uh, sometimes your customers also don't speak your their problems. So uh, a very great salesperson, I would say, should have the ability even to have those inference skills, like in terms of understanding the customer problems. So apart from this, like in general, what I would also look for is, uh, uh, yeah, if the person is an introvert or extrovert, it doesn't matter for me. What I would look for is, do I really love having a conversation with this kind of person? So that is something which I would look for and uh, problem solving or hustling skills you can say and also like one of the fundamental important aspects is the person having the natural ability to understand a sales process it's not about being trained or something for example let's say you're speaking to a potential customer for the first time i would like to see whether this guy just jumps and tries to forcefully sell something or they'll try to listen qualify their interest demonstrate the value first and then they go about closing the deal. So basically, I would say that uh, they should have a good understanding of a sales process. They should have a natural ability. Right. Right. So, uh, sure, I would like to, I think we took up a couple of questions. I'll uh, look out for questions from audience. Uh, please share your questions in the Q&A panel. Uh, we would want to look at that. Uh, meanwhile, I will uh, transfer it back to Gagan. I think, Gagan, uh, you had something to share uh, as well. I'll, I'll take my spotlight off and then go on to you. Yes. Oh, thank you so much, uh, Parish, and thank you so much, uh, yes, as we said. Uh, in between, I actually lost uh, <laughs> because uh, I, I went back uh, in the year 2020 and I was remembering those days when I was getting trained under you, yes, as we said, and <laughs> got all the questions, actually. Thank you, thank you so much for a wonderful uh, session and amazing questions, actually, the answers which people were looking for. Uh, so uh, there's a small announcement. I'll not take uh, much of your time. I'll take only two minutes of yours. Uh, we are coming up with the program. This is called uh, Mentor Driven Inside Sales Training Program. And uh, thank you so much for sharing. Uh, we have started this program because we have seen a lot of potential in the industry, SaaS industry, and we have seen a lot of opportunities opening up for people in inside sales. And that is the reason which is which actually motivated us to get, you know, get uh, towards uh, starting this training program. And we actually uh, looked for a help from our parent company that is Vowel Lumina Networks. And yes, uh, why we are calling it mentor driven because all of this training program will be under the guidance of industry experts and mentors. We have not only from Wow, but also from uh, uh, different organizations. Uh, there are a few features I would like to tell you about uh, 
this uh, training program by 30x learning is that all all sessions all classes will be live classes uh all like the program says it is mentor driven so we'll have we'll have mentor driven program which will run as a buddy system where you will be having a mentor over uh, a, a group of people and he will guide you towards uh, completing the industry projects you have on, hands on training with not only industry projects but you will also have hands on training on the tools which sales guys actually use so there are a lot of tools in addition to what we already have in our mind that see you don't have to only run around in the companies but there's this something called inside sales which is a very structured job profile for sales sales professionals but the only thing is people are not aware of it and uh, that is how we have come like that is why we are doing this so that you know what the processes are what the tools are right and the best part why i'm so confident about this program because i'm not only telling you that i'll get you trained for uh, next 4 weeks but yes uh, we have called 15 now it is more than 15 15 companies which are coming for placement drive and uh, that is the reason we have started this program because the idea is not to only train you but also get you uh, start in this uh, growing industry so that you can also grow with the industry you have already seen a lot of uh, you know content on how this industry is growing uh, there are a lot of like we have as of now we have 30 plus opportunities admissions opening up in the upcoming program and the ctc will be for every job a uh, ctc will be in between 3 lakhs to 10 lakhs yes you can you can actually grab a job of 10 lakhs if you are uh, doing your projects really well and yeah you're basically you're grabbing each and everything and that is how you're getting into and i'll all i will also like to thank our parent company who is taking guarantee of placing 6 to 7 students from this program uh, thank you so much wow uh, illumina networks for this and uh, I'll, i'll i'm sharing a message in a uh, chat box if you can just see uh, this is a very short form which you have to fill uh, we normally don't uh, take students uh, just because they want to uh, you know get a career because there's a starry job profile or starry salaries uh, you know for this we actually guide them whether are you made for sales whether do you do you see yourself uh, you know in this sales profile and to receive a call from career advisor of our uh, company please uh, fill up this short form right i'm um, i'm just sharing that and you can you can join the whatsapp community which uh, we are already sharing i'll share that whatsapp group again you can get a lot of information from there so i i hope i didn't exceed 2 minutes and let's get get back to question answer round and grab more knowledge from parish sir and mrs sir thanks thanks gagan uh, thanks for that i think ashish uh, uh we will uh, so there are many questions i think I, the people have added a lot of questions uh, we will go one by one ashish we help uh, answering those questions uh, i'll just add you right. spotlight as well right all right so let's go one by one there are almost 14 questions uh, please keep posting your questions uh, uh, think okay now uh, sada sivan asks this question what will be the future of software industry as far as online sales are concerned okay i think i will take this question uh, sure. <clears throat> so uh, sada sivan it's like uh, uh, like i said uh, most of this saas companies okay like say earlier like uh microsoft had the crm software or salesforce had the crm software where they were actually used to sell a lot of big softwares uh where you have to go to the kpc company set up everything put up an on prem solution and then come back that's a sales that used to happen now look at zoho right zoho uh, i think almost all of you have are aware or prejdes prejdes becomes so big okay none of them have any of the sales officers they would have someone representing it's not that they don't have anything there but majority of their operations back office is coming from india and this is going to be in almost every segment tomorrow okay right from your edutech segment where you have your uh, back office again the teachers trainers everything coming from india you will have probably the software sales there all of the sales all of the sales that's going to happen globally usually happen through india and we are like most of us are actually uh, very good at speaking communicating and all so it's easier for us to sell it to any of these markets we easily learn and get into that market just you need some basic training to get into that world so this future almost all the softwares will be sold online okay and all of that market is going major like there's a major shift in the industry towards saas solutions so i think that's answers the question okay now uh, the next question this i think there's a question by Uh, Bhumik Nagpal, how do I start a career in inside sales? I think Ashish, can you help that answer? Answer that. 
Uh, right. Yeah. So one of the things uh, I would say, starting a career in inside sales, I would say, get some fundamental knowledge of uh, sales process, like uh, get used to certain things like what does it go in prospecting? What does it go in terms of closing? Uh, so try to understand, like maybe any company you're applying or in general, try to understand their sales process. What exactly are they looking for? So most of the companies will always look for prospecting as the first fundamental skill set. So for prospecting, one of the important things, which is, which, which is very, uh, which is very essential is that listening, having a good understanding of the product or service, which they are going to do and how you are going to reach your customers, engaging the uh, customers. I think this is very uh, important. Yeah. So you, your role starts with BDR and probably you can evolve into the other roles. As well. So there are yeah. a couple of questions here. I will merge them together and ask you, uh, basically there's from, from Shantanu uh, Satya saying, how does an engineering student, like is it engineering student also gets into sales? That's a question. And there's also a similar question by uh, Hitesh Vini Gauda saying that is BCS student, basically he's also BCS bachelor in computer science, uh, okay. is also good in sales sector. So they are doing computer science and would they get into sales roles? Yeah, so definitely. Like uh, I can definitely say, so I am from IT background. Uh, I, I rather enjoy sales rather than coding and all, I should say. And uh, it's not just about an engineer or BC or anyone. Like people actually look for, you know, if you have the skill set or not. Like uh, I would still say the degrees won't matter. Like uh, as long as you fit into the role. I, I highly believe in that. Right. right. I, yes. I would like to add here, I think. So if you're coming from an engineering background, right? Um, an engineering or a computer science background, you have an advantage to play. Because you understand the technicalities as well. And sales roles, like Ashish was mentioning, is not only about the sales roles of uh, a customer. There's also something called solutions architect. Uh, there are also roles like sales engineers. Okay. These are the people, what they do is, uh, uh, when the customer approaches them, uh, they look at the problem. They need more technical understanding. You need to understand what is a lot of technology. Okay. To be able to tell the customer that what you have is the right solution. So it's not a pure marketing or uh, uh, just speaking about, you need to know, understand the nuances of technology, computer science, or any other engineering as well. And I think you play at an advantage in those specific roles and which are actually have valued much more than anything else. Right, yeah. So I think they're called uh, sales solution architect and sales uh, engineer, sales engineer role. Yes, so someone who has a technical background, the, they have a very good advantage for those roles and they're highly in demand. Right, right. Uh, I think this is an interesting question. Uh, Bhavesh uh, asked this question. Sir, my English is so bad. Can I survive in the industry? Yeah, okay, yeah. So it's actually a, a myth. Uh, so one of the important things is that sales is not about uh, having that flowery communication or using this technical jargon and things like that. It's all about uh, understanding your customer. And when you speak, your end customer should understand what you are going to speak. So people will look for you know, how genuine you are as a person and how you are going to help them. That matters a lot rather than how well you are dressed or probably how good your English is and all, all of those things. Yeah, a decent communication to some extent is required, but that doesn't mean that, uh, you know, like you can stop thinking of getting into sales. Uh, I can say that like I'm not very extremely good with my communication skills, but I can, you know, I can say that I'm a very good listener. I can listen to my clients well. Uh, yeah. So basically my customers understand me when I speak. That's all I look for. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think I would add there. Uh, so when the customer is actually, uh, when you are speaking to a customer, he looks at your product and your understanding of product, what you're selling rather than how you're speaking. Then So but you speak, you speak with like uh, uh, half broken English. Uh, whatever that is, but you are able to tell the customer, uh, so tell him the solution that he's looking at for a problem, then you deal with it. So it's not so important that you need to have a very good English as such, but it's not difficult to learn that. Also. Just thought about it, if you are able to manage, I think that should be good enough. Right. Will not be good. right. And uh, I think we, uh, this question also is covered. Uh, uh, so in this, there's a question by Adarsh uh, uh, Makolia saying, how has the current situation impacted the sales operations? How has the software as a service could be used to cure the supply chain uncertainties? Uh, supply chain uncertainties may not be in the context of discussion, but 
how has the situation impacted the sales operations actually okay yeah so uh, I, i think definitely like sales there is a lot of opportunities even in this kind of crisis as well because i think i think parish you are also mentioning that uh, so because many companies look forward to increase their revenues or business so sales is not going to stop right they'll actually look for more sales people so in fact i can still say that we are going to hire at least 10 people and who knows like i would want at least hire 20 or 30 people down the line so uh, so your current pandemic or something is not going to affect really very much in this sales i would say the other way to boost the sales a lot because just yes. people who actually used to visit and uh, do the sales now have to do it on remote uh, they have to do it on zoom call they have to give presentations on zoom calls all of right. that so uh, that has changed the industry every company which was actually doing sales earlier by visiting now is doing everything online okay and now that they understood that uh, sales can be done online now the, why would they want to go and do as a visit because if you have to visit a college or a company or a, anything uh, you would have to pay a shell out like for the flight tickets one then there would be a hotel that you will have to spend on sales so all of these are expenses you save all of that expenses not visiting the person and another important aspect is that when you are doing online you can do multiple uh, calls on a single day like i think ashishvi can actually supplement that Uh, we right. used to do uh, we are now doing almost 3 to 4 calls every, demos every day for person right which is very difficult if you do it physically you probably will be able to visit only particular uh, 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 individual customer anywhere right yeah so uh, definitely like having a face to face visit you are very limited uh, inside sales like you can reach to multiple people you can stay in touch with multiple people at the same time as well right and just to add to that point uh, i think i can say that even people have adapted to the current situation people have adapted technology using these platforms like zoom or remote solutions so they're very highly adaptable to inside sales right so i think there's a question by gaurav mittal uh, someone from hr team hr working in talent acquisition what is your advice for uh, a job inside sales and most of them are either btech right uh okay. actually you are bit actually that's wrong i think uh, i will answer this question gaurav uh, right. uh, like i said engineers had an advantage uh, hr guys will also have an advantage so basically see when you if you look at the verticals that we are looking at okay all of this softwares that are there are vertical oriented okay there are hr softwares a lot of the softwares are hr softwares uh, fresh uh, fresh works has a software called uh, fresh teams okay and there are a lot of companies who are coming up with hr solutions they are wanting to sell okay now while you say that you are a hr student it means that you need you have already understand a lot about uh, solutions for the hr industry yeah domain knowledge right yeah you have domain knowledge that's very important so for any of the department not only for uh, btech or engineering or any of you guys you have to look at what is your industry vertical there are saas companies in almost every vertical uh yes. uh you look at salesforce and all they were into enterprise applications but look at look at uh, the company called uh, zenoti zenoti is a company which recently became a billion dollar company okay zenoti what is zenoti doing it sells spa management software okay if you are you are from a hospitality industry you are doing your uh, what is that uh, uh, hospital management uh, sort of the hotel management uh, thing and you actually go and uh, approach the notice saying that i become want to become an inside sales guy they would be the most happiest to hire you because you already know the industry vertical same thing is for hr same thing is will be for uh, engineering same thing it will be for mechanical engineer same thing is for supply chain and logistics right yeah. every industry has moved towards saas every industry you name any industry i will probably provide you 10 solutions you just go and search for saas companies in my segment right yeah so i think one of the things which they can do is uh... go to captera or g2 uh, search with their verticals like hr software so you will find at least 20 or 30 names which get listed right. yeah i think there are 40 questions we we have just 10 to 12 minutes left i think but i'll try to cover as many as possible uh, there's a question by mamata i think mamata we answered your question uh, how does can mcom guys get into sales almost everyone can right uh, so why not accounting software Yeah, yeah, commerce, accounting sector. Tally, Tally has gone online entirely. QuickBooks is a company that's into accounting management and into uh, this one. So QuickBooks has gone entirely online. 
security systems so if you are a computer science and cyber security professional you have something on that as well right um ah this is an interesting question by uh, shruti dhar shruti dhar rao uh, from ag i think uh, what are the steps of becoming a legend in sales how do you actually become someone really top sales what are the i think that i'll ask that question to you what are the qualities and attributes of a top sales guy ajesh okay yeah that's a great question because even uh, i try to think like how would a uh, ideal sales person look like or things like that yeah so definitely like i think one of the most important things is knowing about your customer in and out that's fundamentally it's going to be very important having a very deep knowledge of your end customer like the traits so how they are going to take decisions what are their preferences what is how they are going to behave or like knowing your buyer persona very well that's very important and not just about knowing your end customer it's all about uh, uh, having that conviction in place like it comes with having a very good product knowledge so what you are going to sell whether it's a product or service if you know in and out about your product or service what you are going to offer to your customer uh, that is definitely going to help you and one of the important things is that great sales people are always great relationship builders so that's going to be very important uh, as well they are very genuine in terms of uh, approaching the clients helping them solve the problems that's a kind of attitude they have so so customer when they say they are not going to buy a deal it's always a great sales people Uh, you know maybe if they're not going to close the deal today but definitely the person is going to approach them down the line right so the genuine look forward to help the customers right yeah. i think this is a question i think you can answer uh, here uh, is from deepika boss she says she said she's already doing her internship in inside sales and uh, she's basically working on i i understand it's more of a data research and email trips okay right uh, uh, now what yeah. what do you think like she's asking should i continue doing this what are the other opportunities that are available and okay. should i continue doing the same internship uh, she's asking okay yeah so one of the things i can say is like whether you're doing a drips uh, i'm not sure whether uh, you are into marketing automation or those are certain areas which you can look for how you can you can define lot of workflows for your prospect customers existing customers so that's one area it's basically drip marketing or account management so that is actually a vast subject as well uh it's it's a marketing automation that's one thing you can evolve into and second thing is since you already know how to reach to the customers you also have some advantage so you can also do a bdr role very well because you know how your when your customer is going to respond what kind of things you you are going to communicate so then the next logical step would be is trying to do a discovery call or understanding with the customer so you can definitely get into a bdr role it's going to help you as well right so i think i would also uh, tell deepika basically uh, i think maybe you just have don't have an entire perspective of what sales roles are but if you just say that i have done my internship inside sales and if you apply to a company like wow uh, we would give you first preference compared to anything else because you yes. already know things which we would want to come what will happen what happens is that people will join us and then we will have to train them all okay so yeah. there uh, uh, not only wow there are many companies that already are looking forward for inside sales people there's a huge demand okay we uh, i think uh, gagan already shared uh, third next learning when they started this program they just approach company saying that we are doing program would you want to have and he said there's already about 15 companies who agreed that we want to have from this particular program okay now it means that the demand is huge all you have to do is uh, get your basics right uh, look out for a right role and then jump into that and uh, definitely there if you are even doing moderately well i would say you don't need to be a really good great sales guy to start with you just do a moderate well the demand is so huge that you will actually scale very well yeah right? we we actually hired someone who was actually doing sending this emails and all of those things we gave preference to the person yes earlier. and i think ashish was saying that we are looking forward to hire at least 10 people do apply to wow specifically with that particular this doesn't apply to everyone uh, specifically for deepika because you already have experience do apply if, what no who knows right i think there's uh, the time is ending but i'll just take there are 38 questions i think it's very difficult to answer all of these questions so uh, uh, guys whoever we could not answer the questions i think we will get this uh, gagan will help us uh, export and send it and we will try to answer uh, those questions uh, to you individually uh, as well so please uh, uh, if you are missing out on the time one hour is extending we'll expand by 5 minutes but not beyond that all right 
So, uh, hey, this is an interesting question by uh, Pratyush. Uh, do the inside sales guys get foreign tours? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so that's an interesting question. So, if you are so inside sales is all about you know selling from India, selling from your house, or probably selling at your place. So that's where your the cost comes down to your company. But who knows? Like when you are probably going to be a director of sales, or maybe you if you are expanding your horizons for your company, uh, you are getting into overseas global market. Maybe you will get an opportunity. You know, you may get a field field visit, or probably you want to establish a new office out there in various companies, right? right. So absolutely, like like in a software company, also right, you will have to wait for. uh selling uh, going to us opportunities or anything as a on site opportunities right so in even in this case you do require office presence across globally uh, it's not that you don't require that but most of the regular jobs everything will be outsourced to india okay so if you have to really get into an opportunity outside or like say if a company is already in us and wanting to establish a uh, new sec new uh, market segment in australia you would want to they would want to have, push their best guys to go and set up things there and you do get the opportunities but again uh, the best of the guys would get like in any other industry right so you have to push yourself to get in but there will definitely be opportunities it's not uh, uh the se- second question i think uh, again by pratyush it's very interesting as well uh, hey sir he's saying that sir hamar ko to sab pata hai we all know that but our parents don't know this field sales mein nahi jana bolenge parents so what do you say to them <laughs> right yeah so <laughs> thank, you. thank you for yeah. asking yeah thanks for asking definitely because even uh, the first initial impression like some people like when i told like i do sales they used to think that i wear ties and go knock at the doors that's a common perception which we carry across about the sales people uh, right like but i think uh, it's uh, sales is actually very rewarding and definitely once uh, you, you know first of all like you need to have that conviction this is a role which i would love and things like that first you get convinced and it's very easy to convince so i think your first challenge of sales is convince your parents right so that's a thing you can take it as an exercise probably i think once you can share some statistics or help them uh, cover these myths sales is actually a very respectable profession in countries like us they really value sales guys a lot one is respectable and it's also de- uh, demand in demand so yeah definitely Yes. So parents, I think, would ask you, "How much do you get?" Okay. Correct. Uh, yeah. Getting the same match in the salary, they would start understanding that. Okay. And yeah. so definitely, you'll have to tell them that it's not door to door sales that you have to go into and do that. Okay. I think this is another interesting question. Now, uh, when someone, as a recruiter, asks you a question that why sales after engineering over engineering, uh, right. this is a question by Ankit Singh. Uh, what? How do you answer a recruiter? Why you want preferences because you are already done engineering? right so i think that's uh, i think that's not a very tough question you can be genuine you can just say that you love the prospects in sales profession and sometimes if you really feel you have some natural abilities where you fit into that role maybe somewhere uh, so maybe uh, certain areas on your life where you can demonstrate that you know you have been good with convincing others or things like that maybe that's something which you can tell your recruiter as well but i think that's that's definitely not a show stopper or something which you need to be really be concerned about you know having right. an engineering background maybe or things like that maybe play to your advantage say advantage that, right yeah uh, yeah i am an engineer i already know the technology and now i want to get in sales because i understood sales at the end of the day you either join a software company and end up being a manager as well right so right. this is like you are getting into that the similar thing right right yes definitely and yeah. many of them do mba after engineering many of them actually do engineering mba after engineering and so before getting into that as well this becomes a very interesting role right uh, yes. uh, i'm just coming on the questions there are pretty many uh, questions actually uh, just looking at what are the nice uh, some of the interesting questions uh, you have, many of your questions are really nice but i think so it will be out of context of answering at this question and we have paucity of time so we'll uh, try to fit in questions that will be helpful for everyone uh especially since pandemic what are the keep in mind okay uh, maybe essentially answer this question maybe uh, yeah. people wonder because people think that uh, sales people are already always uh, uh, born right so is is sales actually say inside sales role specifically are the people made or are they born uh yeah that's a tough question i would say 
uh, definitely but i personally feel that sales great sales people are always made like of course having that innate natural talent helps someone to certain extent but beyond certain point it's always about uh, understanding sales you know that can be achieved through proper training guidance mentoring or also the most important thing is having that right attitude right attitude uh, from an individual yeah. right yeah i am answering a couple of questions here azar uh, asked a question with the customers because he says that sales is only for small customers bulk customers need lot of meeting absolutely not azar zoho is a company that selling to lot of customers absolutely without a single uh, uh, marketing sales guys okay so uh, without a meeting single meeting uh, so all the companies are actually doing it okay so if you think that meeting is it's absolutely a myth that you will have to go and meet okay right, yeah. so i just want to add one point to that so just two days back i was discussing with a prospect client who is from vietnam and someone from in indonesia and these right. are small customers or large customers almost every kind of customer requires right. to get insights right yeah every so they contacted us and they look forward to work with us absolutely right i think anurag i answered your question about five traits of insights as well we already answered that question uh, someone asked a question that is it a, can i do a part time job absolutely not okay uh, don't look out for a part time job uh, in insight sales you may just want to learn something part time but a role is a full time role always uh, companies don't uh, seek out part time jobs uh, how can a marketing specialization from an mba get into sales absolutely uh, there's nothing no question prashant uh, of marketing or sales different doesn't make, make a difference a lot uh, sales and marketing always go in hand in hand uh, marketing is very important for getting the leads in and the sales guys actually are the ones who act, uh, do the outbound part of it so both work in hand in hand always together so there's not major like hardcore differentiation kind of thing and you need creative ways in sales as well you need creative ways in marketing as well right yes uh, can medical medical students get into sales and marketing with basic knowledge is is does it have a future this is from uh, naam realme hai realme is okay uh so medical students again every industry has saas okay right. the doctors today are using software to do everything right from your doc- hospital management system to your lab and city management or anything right and everything everything requires spe- specialty people is it a b farm guy or a doctor everyone requires that and uh, all of the even medical uh, delivery is going saas saas is again a software you are keep uh, with this pandemic you are clicking on your phone uh, doing a call to a doctor and doing even that is saas okay mm-hmm. just that your end customer is a single b2b uh, small uh, end user right so it's a b2c product but again mm-hmm. that also is similar to saas practo right practo is practo is there pretty many companies like practo is purely into saas again every industry requires saas so whichever so all you have to do is uh, do this what are saas companies in healthcare saas companies in real uh, real estate real estate has saas companies saas right. companies in uh, medical uh, what is that education saas companies in whichever field that you are studying in yes. just do that and you will find companies right i think uh, we are going towards end of career uh, end of the call uh, it's already there uh, there are many questions i think 45 questions uh, gagan what do you suggest <laughs> there are, there are a lot of questions I, i i wasn't expecting because somewhere i i also come from a tech background and i was also like i had very questions i didn't knew that people will come with with so many different questions and i really like that question whether i can go to abroad or not yeah that is actually a question to be asked see if your company sends you i don't know whether they are going to send you but yes uh, the way you can grow in this industry you can actually go with your money actually so that is what i would like to say right yeah so uh, i think we do have actually th- th- there was a question i was looking at uh, i think it, it that question also became very popular nowadays uh, i've seen so many questions on linkedin actually about the big targets many people fear that these uh, like everyone in sales are getting lot of big targets so i think they fear stress somewhere so can you can you just elaborate a little part of a, a big target whether it is actually big or they just feel it it is a big target i just see yeah no so i think uh, the word target the word may be fearful but i would say sales is you know like once you really understand your sales process and you know your customer and product well so there's nothing which is going to stop you 
right? You, you will, you will trust me. Like you'll never fear. You'll never, you'll have that same fear. So before I, I got into sales, I can say that definitely I used to, I, I used to have that same fears, but now I would say it's all myth. I can guarantee that, right? Mm-hmm. It's, it's always very rewarding. It's always very rewarding. Think of it like it's a very rewarding profession and things like that. Yeah. Challenge. Actually, people don't see the other part of fear. I think big targets get you big incentives. As well. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, <laughs> right. Right. So, uh, so guys, like I can clearly tell you that, uh, like I think as Paresh was telling, uh, so maybe it's a confession I can say, a great sales guy is always they're approached by other companies. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So why do you fear of targets and things like that? Yeah. You are in always in demand when uh, you are a good sales guy. Okay, because. Every company, uh, believe me or not, every company relies on getting more business. And right. who will get the business is the salespeople. Okay. And with the SaaS, everywhere, this is going to be on a huge demand. I think that's something that the reason we uh, we are here speaking about this, uh, HHV is here. We are, we are true sense of what we are doing already. And uh, we are actually looking forward to hire a lot of guys uh, in the sales roles in the next few years, next few months, next couple of months only, actually. And then uh, uh, Gagan came up with this interesting program saying that let's do a sales-based training program. Why not? Absolutely. Let's jump into that. I think over to you, Gagan. I think we are already short of short time. Maybe you would want to share about your program details and all, and then uh, we will take a leave. So thank yes, you. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. We will, we will so answer much. the questions that people have right. asked. Please shoot out those questions to us. We will reply to them in person as well. So I, I'll share all these questions with you. And uh, like after creating a document, what I'll do is I'll share with every participants because... Uh, and I, I, I like I don't know how to thank you everyone for showing such a great response. We are still having 500 participants with us, and uh, that is that shows that uh, somewhere we were feared that people are still not interested in sales. But I think the way we have gone today and the questions we have answered, the people like uh, like uh, most of the audience stayed intact for whole session. And thank thank you so much for that. Uh, as far as the training program is concerned, next whole week. Uh, we are doing a counseling session for people. Uh, it includes the final year students and uh, the young alumni. When we when I talk about young young alumni, so we are catering. Uh, also, we are also counseling people those who have just got into industry. They are only one or two years in the industry, and we are doing this uh, program for them because uh, we feel somewhere that uh, if if uh, if they are not able to fetch a right inside sales job or they are not getting that opportunity, uh, they they need some training. And uh, this four weeks training will get you everything. And uh, we are taking responsibility of not only training you, but also getting your job uh, that to a very right job in the industry where you will, uh, uh, yeah, you can grow like anything. Thank you so much, everyone for joining today. I've already shared uh, this form with you. You can fill up this form and uh, we'll, we'll give you a call and our career, you can, you can share a, a number of questions with the career advisor one, whenever you are receiving the call. And yes, uh, we are we are there for you anytime, right? Thank you so much, Paris sir. Thank you so much, uh, yes, sir. I like, uh, like I, I've seen uh, like uh, uh, it. Actually, I told you like uh, I, I was lost in those days when I was getting trained under both of you. Uh, thank you, thank you so much. And with your permission, can we go ahead and conclude the session? Sure, sure. Thanks. Thank you again. Thanks for inviting us. Right. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you so again. much. Everyone. Thanks, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much, everyone. We are signing off for this webinar. Thank you.